In the following video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the new tools we've added to Enforce recently in the July update, which primarily focus around extracting imagery from point clouds. Uh, that's when the imagery is being included as a, as a pano or as a, a cubic map. So I'm going to start by importing that information. Notice that you have a, a new option that says load images. Okay, and I'm just going to allow that to come in. So the first thing it does is extract the images and then it will bring in the point cloud data as normal. Okay, so here we have the data. All right, so what you'll notice is that over on the left hand side we have a new section that says images. Okay, now we also uh, have an item here under the groups, which essentially are your scan locations, which is show scan locations. And if I tick that, you'll see them pop up. Now, new to this current version, which is July onwards, if I right click one of these and show show camera, it will move me to that camera location. Okay, and if I roll the ball out and in, it has the desired effect. And to get out, you just press escape. Okay, so that's viewing the scan from a scan location. What we can also do is if I tick on one of these scan locations, say this one here, it takes me to that scan location. If I bump up the lighting, it will hide the join in the cube map. And there you go. Now if I tick on the side here, show point cloud. Okay, so now I have the point cloud overlaid with the image. Okay, so if I was to suddenly go and change the point cloud to say intensity, it looks like that. So you've got the, obviously you've got the kind of the sky map in the background from the imagery, and there's our scan. Change that to intensity, obviously, if I wanted to. Uh, change it to grayscale, sorry. There we go. And if I use these arrows, I can flick between each setup. If I hit the cross, I can come out of it. Go back to normal. Okay, now if I tick show image locations, you get these kind of up lighter items here. And if I just click on one of those, it will also take me to that location. Okay. So cross to cancel or arrows to go back and forward through the images. So what I'm going to do this again with, um, I'm just going to just quickly extract the castle data. So I'm going to close that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the castle into its own group so I can merge that. And then I'm going to ground extract uh, around here and just to show how the data sets can be merged and visualized all at the same time even in the image view. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add group, call it castle. I'm going to move the data from the two scan locations into the castle group. So to start that, first of all I'm just going to localize it. I'm going to go to set rectangle for the clipping box and just very quickly say from there to there and do that. Okay. All right. So I've got some noise on the back, so I'm actually going to add a group. Call that noise. And what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to just turn that group off and then go group by polygon. And over here it says target group noise, original group any. And if I just look down on it, and essentially just do this. And I'll go into the noise group. Okay, so hopefully I've tidied up, I've tidied up the noise I don't want. Okay, so now I'm just going to move all of this data into the castle group. So we'll go group by polygon, original group, any target group, castle. So let's take a big swath of this. And I'll change that to say intensity so I can tell which is which. And just drop the intensity to say recap colors, then it will uh, be obvious. And what I want to do is just make sure that I only get the basic castle, not the ground. Okay, so hopefully now I've got just the castle isolated. So if I now turn off the other setups, they disappear. And 
I can just now put this probably back to normal. Okay, so if I want to mesh this, all I need to do is go to the 3D meshing tool. Uh, and it's nice dense data from the RTC. I think that's what used to scan this. So I'll say let's go for five millimeter as our nominal density factor, and we'll let everything else, uh, yep, yeah, live on auto, and hit calculate. Okay, now the process is complete. If I turn off the point cloud, we'll see the results. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit it to a mesh, i.e. turn it into a DTM, because that will give me some more options to display it differently later on, or I could just export it to an IFC uh, or OBJ. But if I do export mesh, I shall just give it a suitable name. Press OK. Okay, so turn the point cloud back on, uh, turn the setups back on, and this time I'm going to turn the castle off, and I'm going to reset the clipping box. Okay, and I obviously don't want that information there, so I'm going to move that into the noise group, which will now be turned off, and probably this data back here as well. Okay, so I've just tidied up some loose noise, and if I then choose set rectangle for the clipping box, I shall say, coming across the back here, something like that. Obviously I don't want the tree involved, I don't necessarily need to remove it, but uh, I might as well. So now I'm going to create the ground model, I'm going to drape to 0.25. Good. Right, so create the grid, castle topo. I don't need to cut it up into smaller parts, so don't dissect DTM. I don't need to fill across gaps. And we'll just press OK. So now if I flip back to Project Manager, that gives me that. So if I go to a white background. Okay, so obviously we get a little bit of noise involved in this because it's a scan data. So I'm going to go to DTM and go to Smooth. It takes care of that for me. I'll just remove these items that I don't need. Okay, that looks okay. So now what I need to do then is just digitize some of the uh, linear features, say that from the path, for instance. Here's the path. Okay. Now. If I want to start digitizing the path, I can just click as normal here, obviously, but it would be quite cool to do it from the pictures. So if I click on here, it takes me into the picture view, and there you can see the path. Okay. So if I now go to digitize, I'm going to say PA for path. I hit select points. It tells me I'm going to do a path. And now I can digitize just as I would normally. Roll a ball to zoom in, obviously. And tick always visible. There we go, you can see it now. So just click and drag to change your pan or change your view position. Okay, so if I close that, you can see now that's where that lies. I can't quite pick up the edge of the path from the other views because it's actually obscured slightly. Uh, from this little lump here. So I'll just digitize that manually myself again. So I'll go select points, I'm going to press N for new. Okay, and I'm just going to guess. Okay, so that's the path added. So if I click on that setup again, you can see there's the path overlays nicely. And there's our castle, obviously. If I turn the castle back on and do show point cloud, that's in there now. But if I change that to intensity, you can see obviously that now stands out nicely. If I turn on edge enhance a little bit, obviously you can zoom out quite a lot. Or zoom in. 
We can use this same view to section information if we'd want to. So if I go to sections, and if I just go Z, it will snap a Z plane right the entire way through the site. If I just say no, I want it to say 10 by 10, and only obviously a skinny bit, a skinny section. I can then control the section from in here. Let's just change the intensity, the grayscale, there we go. And then I can sort of snap to point and I can say, well, actually, I'd really like it there. And that's where it'll jump to. Okay. Let's get rid of the section now. Um, so that's still showing us the point cloud. Um, obviously, we've got the ground model in here as well, but let's see. So we've got the, the scan in here as well, but we haven't got the castle, we haven't got the ground model in yet. So if I go to home, Back cloth, which basically is the same as the back cloth in normal N4, so I can put other data sets in here. So I put the castle in and the castle topo. So if I turn the point cloud off, there's the topo. So what I'll do is I will go to the topo model, which is here, and we can say wireframe. I see it overlaying quite nicely. If I do put the point cloud on and just change the thickness of the points to one, you can obviously see through the ground, so see through the glass, the grass, sorry, you can see through the grass, so you can see obviously how the terrain model has been picked out. It looks pretty good, I think. And that's still using the castle is in its um, point cloud form. So if I untick that, it'll disappear. And now I can see the mesh, which represents the um, solid model, obviously. So under here, I can now say, so for instance, wireframe. You can look at it like that. all overlaid in the same view as everything else. Put the section back in. And obviously because it's a model, I can then say slice models. And then you'll see a nice line. If I turn the point cloud on as well, we'll see how the two interact. Make the point cloud a bit thinner. Okay, so with live update ticked, you can see as I right click, you can see how the solid gray line there, which represents our surface, ties up with our point cloud. And that concludes this demonstration.